<laughs> the the uh, missions that are basically just walking around and talking to people, that was a misstep. Uh, oh my. <sighs> There's. Let me let me stop right here for a second. I I get that like there are some times when you just need to slow down. But I don't think that that needs to be a whole mission in itself. Yeah. Because Misstep. they were just these open areas that you're like they're like okay, go talk to this person and like the, after the last few levels, you're like, all right, let's go talk to that person. <laughs> yeah. So you run over there as fast as you can, because yeah. you're hyped up on the adrenaline. Mm -hmm. You get to the person, you talk to them, and then they have you go talk to somebody else, and you're like, uh, okay. So you run over there, you are running, you're jumping over shit, you're not listening to anything. You get to yeah. the person, they say, okay, go talk to the person that you just talked to, because we're ready now. Okay, so you run back to the person, and then you talk to them again, screen fades out, little Cut, cinematic. Cutscene triggers, and then you get an achievement for finishing the next mission. And you're like, that was it? That could have been a cutscene. In fairness, that could have been a cutscene. And I would prefer... It, your... it could have been a cutscene, or even just part of a level. Yeah. Because there's things to do in those yeah. if you go and search for them. But there's not there's not enough that's required. Like there there are there are like hidden hidden audio logs that you can find in those missions. Which are hilarious. To like fur, further the further the story and sometimes give you a little bit of a laugh, which is fun. And they have them they have them in the combat missions too. The thing well, is, if if all your if all the mission is is walking around, you need to have more that is required of me, mm -hmm. because I feel like there's just nothing here. Yeah, and it feels like they just kind of padded the game to have a higher number of missions. Mm -hmm. Because there's only a total of what? Um, there's like fifteen. Fifteen missions. Yeah. Well, without the. Without the stand and talk. No, that's with the stand and talk. I know. Without them, it's like, uh, I want to say like... It's like 12. 12, yeah. Ish. Something. 11 or 12. Not, yeah, not, in, not, not a, a it's, lot. It's, kind, it's pretty short, but what's there is strong except when, when they're doing stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Because like, there's a lot, there's a lot to say that's really good about this game. Like it's a fun, it's a fun game. Oh yeah. Which like, there there are a few games where like, you'll you'll be enjoying it, but you can't really say that you're having fun. And this game is fun. It's not, it's not, gr it doesn't reach greatness. Mm -hmm. Which I I feel I feel Halo Four did. I feel, Halo Four was. <clears throat> I feel Halo Four reached greatness because it was fun, like this game is, and it also had a very strong story and fill and packed that story to capacity and an amazing score. Oh yeah. Oh. But, yeah. By the way, we love music. Oh God, we love music. Ah, uh, so as we. Uh, at some point, may start doing uh, barbershop quartets and whatnot on on here, yeah, because we just tuned. love we just love doing those. We don't have equipment or uh, music memorized yeah. enough to start doing it. But the the music in four, oh my god! I bought that yeah. and like it's really percussive too, like. Per percussion, I love percussion. Phil Collins is one of my favorite, one yeah. of my favorite uh, musicians of all time, and he is the drummer. And he kind of instilled in me a love of percussion and rhythm. And Halo Four just kind of hit that sweet spot for me because yeah. there's a lot of drums. But there's like it's not just the drums though as well. Like yeah. they're because I it's never just the drums but like because the, there are some some of the songs in there that are just beautiful mm -hmm. like um, personally one of my 
favorites on there. Well, actually, I'll go with my three favorites for three different reasons. Um, Immaterial is one of them, yeah. and it's the one whenever, uh, like, you first become the Reclaimer. Uh-huh. Like, the librarian gives you a power-up that you don't really get. You just yeah. uh, can unlock doors, kind of. <laughs> kind of a power-up. Um, and so it's got this, like, thooming to it uh, yeah. over and over throughout that level. <clears throat> but then that song comes back later at the end of the game whenever you do the, like, sort of quick time event yeah. at the end. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, oh, shit, things are about to go down. Yeah. My other one is uh, 117, which is just the quintessential song for a Halo game, and that is the final charge, as I like to call it. Yeah. Uh, it's the one where you are you're basically doing the uh, Death Star Trench run mm-hmm. uh, in the whatever vehicle that is, and it it has its own rhythm. And it gets it gets good, and it crescendos a lot. It's mm-hmm. beautiful. And then there's the part to where the original theme song kicks in, and you're just like, "It's time to go!" Yeah. And you get pumped. the The game gets pumped. Everything is just pumped. The house pumps. Yeah. Your mom asks why the house is pumping. And you say Halo is happening now! And she completely understands. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, and then there was Green and Blue, which... Yeah. If Green you haven't and, played Halo 4... Green and Blue gets go. me right, right here. Oh. I, I like, actually cried at yeah. the end of 4. Oh, my God. And it wasn't just because, like, it was a sad ending, but... Oh... That music just moves you without the need of the video or mm. audio from it. Like, they could have taken both of those things out, credits roll because you knew what happened, and you would still be sitting there bawling. Yeah, green and blue gets me. It's gets me right beautiful. Here. Look it up on YouTube if you want to have a nice cry. <laughs> Yeah. If it's one of those days you need some green and blue mm-hmm. when you're feeling blue. <laughs> and hey, so, Halo Five Halo Five has has good music. It has it has good music, but uh like we said before, it's never <laughs> just drums. Mm-hmm. It's just drums. <laughs> Like it's very percussive. Yeah, uh, it's it's more because this is a more action-packed game than Halo Four was. Mm-hmm. Like it, the the story is just more like get ready, come on, let's go. Like it's it's a smaller scale, uh, smaller scale story than Halo usually tells. Which is odd because you go to a lot more varied places yeah. in this one, and um, and where like four. You were in one place, basically. Yeah. So it feels weird that Halo 4 was a bigger game. Yeah. Well, what's interesting to me is, like, it's kind of the way it was presented. Like, the way it worked. Because, like, with Halo with Halo 5, they give you, like, they give you squad mates. Like, they, they embrace, like, kind of team, team building between the Spartans. Mm-hmm. And it kind of puts you in a place like in a Gears of War game. Mm-hmm. Like Gears of War is very is a very small scale action game. Like yeah. it's it's a got a smaller scale story. Your your goal is basically to come from here, figure out what we're doing, go there, kill locusts, beat the game, win the world. Yeah. That that's what that's what Halo Halo 5 kind of does. It's like okay, we know what we're doing. We need to get the chief. Come on, let's go. And it's it's a come on, Bominos. <laughs> Everybody, let's, let's go. go. Yes, it's it's the Dora the Explorer of Halo, games, <laughs> which you probably won't hear any other reviewers like that. But only our fat faces. He, he kind of is though, because <laughs> like you're, you're. Where are we going? This place? <laughs> <laughs> and like, 
it's it it like keeps keeps the ball rolling mm-hmm. in a in a way that some some of the Halo games just don't, and it doesn't. It doesn't explain itself, but it doesn't have to because it's being it's being an action movie this time around. Yeah. Like it's just being what it is. And that's fun. It doesn't work so much for the uh narrative. And the narrative yeah. the narrative is not bad. It's just not up to the standard we've been given. That and it was also completely 180 from what they were advertising. Because mm-hmm. they advertised it as Master Chief has gone rogue, we're going to go and hunt him down. Yeah. And uh, there was also the flip side of it like, Locke is, Locke is being an asshole, I'm going to kill him whenever he finds me. Yeah. And like, we thought there was going to be like a Spartan on Spartan civil war. Yeah. Like, Chief was being the guardian of the universe because yeah. he is, and they they but did not they did not deliver on that. They it did was... not do that. Instead, they had the hunt in the beginning, and then, sh- like, bigger shit started happening, and they were still trying to chase the chief. But now he was like sort of in trouble. Yeah, sort of because he's the master chief. He can take care of himself. Yeah, he's a big boy. He it's... is he is seventy years old. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. 